Hi there folks, this is Adam with 8Badge Gaming coming to you today with the second gameplay video in our Alolan Ninetales GX series. We're just going to go ahead and hop right on into the queue there without any further delay. And we're currently sitting at 1 and 1. We were able to kind of beat up on our opponent in the first round and lose quite spectacularly in the second round. We're against a Steel, Water, and Psychic deck here. So I'm going to imagine this is, say, Dusk Main Garboder maybe. Maybe. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what it is, but seeing steel is not a good time for us. Now, we are taking the second turn here, so if we do have the ability to start a Vulpix, which we did, we can get it going off with a beacon on the first turn here. Now, we're going to see what our opponent is starting with. We're only going to reveal the... Actually, no, we're going to put down the Vulpix just in case. And our opponent's going to get a good idea of what we're on, obviously, right off the bat. So we see, ooh, is this, say, Dustmain Magna Zone, which could likely be the case. We're going to see an Ultra Ball here, probably for a Tabu Lele, for a Bridget, for a couple Dustmains, and maybe another Magnemite. Now, the Tapu Coco getting some spread damage in here does help fairly considerably with our numbers, which I am still totally okay with and if he does fill up his bench here being able to just put energy on the coco and start just getting some flips in is going to fix some of the numbers that we need if we can get two flips in it means that any regular blizzard edge from a nine tails will ko our opponent's dusk mains there now he is going to attach an energy to retreat this magnemite force up the dusk main and pass it on back to us now we do start off with an energy here but we don't have much else that we can do so we're just going to straight off and i feel really bad doing so because it fills up our opponent's hand once more and it does leave us actually pretty far behind here so we're going to remorade we're going to ultra ball discarding an energy and an aqua patch we're going to go here for, I'm thinking, a Lele for a draw supporter. Now, I think we can also go for an Octillery, but we want to see what we have prized here. So, looking at our prizes, we have one of our Remoraids in play. Uh, it looks like we have both of our Octillerys and our Mewtwo. We have our Coco in play, our Vulpixes are there. I have all of our nine tails. It looks like we have a Lele prized. Uh, we have already used, uh, or rather discarded an Aqua Patch, and we have another in hand, so those check off those. We used two Ultra Balls. Um, I think we're just going to go for the Octillery here and kind of just take our get go overall. Uh, we're going to Aqua Patch uh, an energy here onto the Vulpix, and we're going to start off with a flying flip here. Now, I like that we're spreading a bit of damage, but I know we don't actually get any damage onto the Magnemites here, which isn't good for us. Uh, they do have a couple of energy in their discard, so I'm likely seeing a Mount Coronet coming here momentarily. Now, Octillery isn't too much of a worry at the moment. We see a Timer Ball getting a Heads and a Tails. He goes for a Magnezone, which definitely implies a rare candy here. I hope he doesn't have any additional energy in turn so he can get the Duskmane going right off the bat. Ooh, we're seeing at least three energy here, but is he going to go for Meteor Tempest to be able to KO the Coco? If he doesn't, I'm totally okay with that because that means that we're going to be able to just go deep here. Uh, we top deck a Bridget a little bit too little too late here at the moment, but we are going to go ahead and use it because we want to get some more stuff onto our bench. Now we're going to go for just straight Vulpixes here to fill our bench because we want to have our redundancy, especially in the face of our weakness. We're going to Abyssal Hand to put ourselves back up to five cards, and we do get ourselves a Floatstone but no Evolutions here. So we are still not in a great space. Um, we get to Flying Flip, and it looks like he doesn't have the Magnazone, or rather the Rare Candy for the Magnazone just yet, because he would have done it last turn. He is manually attaching an energy to the Duskmane and passing it back with no more challenge than that. So that is definitely an interesting one there, to say the least. Now, we could go ahead and force up the Dialga here. Um, I don't want to invest our Ninetales here just yet. 
So let's see what we can do. We can go for a Cynthia, which is what I think we will do. We have a lot of cards in hand that we're just not quite able to use. We do hit another energy here, and we can Brooklet Hill to get rid of that Mount Coronet. We can throw a Choice Band on the Tapu Coco to sink some additional damage into this Necrozma here. And we're going to Abyssal Hand for two. Now, we do get the baby nine tails, which could really shut down our opponent, but we won't reveal that we have it just quite yet because we want him to not invest energy onto a Magnazone, for example. We likely will see, say, another energy attachment here onto the Dusk Mane and possibly see him discard. Ooh, quite a bit. That's a large amount of discard there. We see his discard filling almost entirely, getting rid of some energy. Lele, the Magnazone. He does get a Mount Coronet, which lets him get energy back, and we get a Claw Slash. So we're even still only not even too worried here, because that's a three-turn clock coming from that Tapu, or on our Tapu Coco here. Um, I think we will go ahead and evolve our Alolan Ninetales. Uh, on to just a Vulpix. We're going to save this for a GX, and we're going to use a Cynthia here. We want to keep that Sycamore and that Guzma in the deck, so that's why we're not using a Sycamore straight up. Uh, we can go ahead and throw a Choice Band down if we want, but I don't think it's where we want to be, because we're only getting ourselves one card with Octillery, and that's if we do Evolve. Uh, now, we could go for the Nine Tails. He's at 90 damage. Uh, we could just Blizzard Edge for KO. So let's go ahead and attach a Choice Band here. We will Octillery to draw one. If we're evolving in Nine Tails, it's just as well to get the cards out of hand. We're going to retreat and we're going to go for a Blizzard Edge to KO this Ninetales, or use this Ninetales rather, to KO the Duskmane. So we do get to take two prizes here right off the bat, which is a double colorless, which is great to see, and an Ultra Ball. Now, what we want to do here is, let's see, we can Aqua Patch on to the baby Ninetales. Ooh, that's not what I'd like to see. Getting rid of what we have in hand here is not a fun time for us, but we do have the Octillery in the face of all that fun stuff there. Now, Aqua Patch plus DCE does actually mean that we can get our Alola Ninetales into the active against this Dialga hair and start shutting it down because he doesn't have any real active way to get rid of it. So let's, ooh, that's actually good as well. So we're going to Aqua Patch and Energy on to this Ninetales. We're going to attach here. We're going to Octillery to draw two. To see what we get. It's a DCE and a field blower. I'm going to field blow away this Mount Coronet here um, and we're just going to get it out of here. I don't think we actually use the Sycamore now because we don't want to get rid of our other double colorless energy here. Um, seeing we already have three accounted for at the moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to retreat this Ninetales into baby Ninetales, force it up and do an Aurora Beam for 110 via the Choice Band here. So he has only 10 HP left on this Dialga. He's going to want to get it out of the active, and if he does, what we can actually do is retreat into our Ninetales GX and use our Ice Blade to just kind of snipe it off of the bench. He is going for a Magna Zone here. We're likely going to see him rear candy. He finally gets his energy suit up combo ready, but he doesn't have an easy way to get rid of the Dialga. Now, if he has four energy in hand, he could do a Timeless GX to go for, say, an Altair to take an extra turn, but it's not going to be KOing our Ninetales. Now, if he gets the Guzma, he is going to be able to force up, say, our Ninetales on the bench and essentially mess up our plan quite a bit. But I think we're going to be okay with that. If he's going to invest in on the Dialga here, he's not going to be able to actually KO our Ninetales. Now, he could go for an Overclock. He is suiting up the Magnazone. Ooh, does he have the... F he has the full four energy for the Magnazone here, folks, to be able to Zap Cannon to KO our baby Ninetales. Ooh, that is a... 
blistering of a beating there. I am really not happy about that. He ha to think that he had six full energy accessible to him to be able to pull that play there. That's pretty astounding overall. Now, I guess we're going to go ahead and force up the Coco here, because Coco can still, at the very least, take a KO on that Dialga. Um, we're going to, let's see, throw down a Lele to go for a different draw supporter than the Sycamore here. We're going to go for an N to mess with our opponent's hand, uh, put them down to exactly five, hopefully mess with their plan overall uh, and what they want to do do let's attach a water energy or actually no let's attach the dce to this nine tails here go ahead and n to force our opponent down a card in hand uh we go into double guzma so what we can do is we already have enough prizes on the bench that our opponent can just ko us uh let's rescue stretcher to return a pokemon from discard to hand which will be our baby nine tails which will promptly put down on our last ololan volpix here we're going to Abyssal Hand here to draw a couple of cards. Uh, we do get an Ultra Ball, but it's kind of pointless at any other purpose than getting stuff out of hand. But let's go ahead and Flying Flip here to get a KO. So we get his Octillery up to 80 damage now. We'll be able to take a prize with a Flying Flip on the following turn. And we did KO the Dialga here. So we are still pretty far ahead. We're down to two prizes. And our opponent has to worry about this magic zone now. Um, if he can't suit up a secondary Pokemon to be ready to attack, we could potentially have the capability of just doing a Blizzard Edge to KO. Now we've used three of our Aqua Patches here, so we would need to somehow hit the last to get us where we need to be. Now we can use the Ultra Ball to look to see if we do have Aqua Patch available. Um, and he is going for energy in on this Duskmane Necrozma here. Does he have the Guzma, I wonder? Now, if he has the Guzma, we are a little bit boned here because he takes out our Ninetales. Now, he does get to just use the GX attack here. And that does kind of screw our plan. Now, we can put up the Coco here again. Our opponent still will be behind on prizes, and we'll get that Octillery out of the way. We have our own Guzma as well that we can use to kind of take out that Lele. We'll put a Choice Band down here. We're going to Energy. Uh, let's do an Ultra Ball, discarding an Energy and a Sycamore. Um, let's go for for probably nothing out of this. We're just going to look for deck thinning. We do have the aqua patch. What energy do we have left in the deck? Three water and a DCE. Um, what we want to do here now is let's Guzma up, I think. Yeah, let's Guzma up the Lele because we can put up the Octillery we can retreat the Octillery into the Coco. We can then do an Abyssal Hand. To go up a few cards here, we can Brooklet Hill to get rid of Mount Coronet. Um, and let's Brooklet Hill to go for nothing. Just have a look at the deck and we'll do a Flying Flip. All right, so we have ourselves in a position now to be able to win next turn. We have the Guzma plus DCE. Our opponent is not likely to use, say, an N here. Um, we do see a rare candy, which is going to evolve into a second Magnazone here. Um, he is likely going to get the Lele out of the active and KO the Coco, but that means we do just win on our turn. Because what we'll do is if he gets the Lele out of the active is we'll put our DCE. Ooh, he is going to end. Color me surprised here. That's actually a pretty big deal. 
Oh, putting us into a Cynthia is good on our part, though. So let's see. We will go ahead and we'll put up our Octillery here. Uh, we're going to Cynthia, I think, starting off to first here. Or no, let's actually Octillery Abyssal Hand here. Because if we hit the Guzma at DCE, we can win. Um, we have the Guzma with the Lele. Um, let's see, let's see, but we needed to be able to get an DCE onto here. So, our opponent needs to not have Guzma. Let's do an Ultra Ball, and we're going to discard the Cynthia and the Lele. And I know that's risky, but we're going to sin our deck. And we're going to go for Lele. We can end our opponent down to two. Our opponent can't attack next turn. Um, they would need to have a Guzma. So let's go for a Lele here. Um, and we're going to Aqua Patch. Get an energy to go on to our nine tails here. Uh, we're just going to Sycamore. We're going to go deep. We're going to try and see what we can get. We do get energy. We have Float Stone. We don't want to promote Lele just quite yet. We'll attach an energy to Baby Nine Tails. We'll retreat and hope he doesn't have a Guzma. Uh, Guzma is our doom. Let's Brooklet Hill to get a Remoraid out of the deck, because why not? Um, and we're going to Aurora Beam. If he has the KO with the Guzma, he has the KO. There's nothing we can do about it. Uh, he just Guzmas up our, say, Alolan Ninetales. He's got the Ultra Ball. Does he have another Lele? Please do not have another Lele. I would really appreciate it if he didn't. He doesn't. Okay, he goes for a Magnemite. Does he have the Guzma on hand? He has, let's see, used one Guzma so far. Let's see. Can he get out of the situation? We just need one prize. If he passes, we can win. Um... We see an energy being attached to this Magnezone, a Sycamore. So he doesn't have the Guzma. Now, if he gets enough energy, he can fuel up the second Magnezone. How many energy does he have in his discard? He's got two energy in discard. He's getting... So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven. So he might not have hit it. He didn't hit it! Oh, folks, we have this game. So let's go ahead and just for the shits and giggles, we're going to Guzma up the Magnazone here, promote our Octillery, we're going to retreat into the Baby Ninetales, and our opponent scoops it up. So, in a very close match against one of the decks that we weren't expecting as our weakness, straight up, because we weren't expecting metal decks, we managed to get the win there. We were able to actually take a KO on a metal deck. That's really surprising, but it does get to show you how good the deck can be when you get the ability to manipulate your opponent's board state, when you get a baby nine tails and they're forced to put energy into a Magnazone, and the Magnazone can only attack every second turn with Zap Cannon, unless you do have, say, that Guzma effect there that can swap it out of the active and clear that status. So we are sitting now at three, and, sorry, two and one out of the three rounds played, and I'm liking the deck. I am liking the updates to it. I do like the Tapu Coco uh, in the deck, the ability to use Lele's over Mike's original version, for example. Um, I have been a little sad of not being able to use Aqua Patch so far to its full sufficiency, or its full efficiency, I should say. Uh, but I do look forward to continuing playing it. I do hope you enjoyed this video today. We do greatly appreciate your viewership. I hope you tune in for our future gameplay videos. And this is Adam with 8 Badge Gaming, signing off.